This is the Golden Haggadah, which is um, the scenes you'll see are the plagues of Egypt, the scenes of liberation, and the preparation for Passover. This is another illuminated manuscript from 1320, and it's also pigment on vellum, um, found in late medieval Spain. Theme is objects of wealth and ritual. The Jewish community in Barcelona and Spain had lived peacefully and productively under Christian and Islamic rule for hundreds of years. Um, Christians were ruling in this time, and the community was in this area was the most influent in Spain, the Jews. And the Jews, their positions, um, their jobs were they were advisors, physicians, financiers, you know, so they were the bankers. Um, and they, so they were the bed of the bankers to Barcelona, um, to the courts of Barcelona, to the king, and provided economic and social protection for them as well. They grew attuned to the taste of the court and began commissioning manuscripts decorated in the Christian style. So when you're looking at these images, <laughs> they certainly don't look very um, Jewish. They look very Christian um, in their stylized, their stylized forms. The Golden Haggadah is one of the most luxurious examples of the illuminated manuscripts, mostly because of the paint, the styling, and certainly a lot of gold, the reason why it's called the Golden Haggadah. It is a book that is read during the Jewish Seder, and the Seder meal takes place around Easter time, around our Easter time. And it's a ceremonial Passover meal that takes place um, on the eve of Passover. And it commemorates and reenacts the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt. So if you've seen the Ten Commandments, a lot of this will carry over and you'll have a good understanding of that. If not, I highly recommend you watch the Ten Commandments. On the eve of the Jewish holiday of Passover, a child traditionally asks a critical question. Why is this night different from all of our other nights? This is a question that's asked every every the night before Passover. This question sets up the ritual narration of the story of Passover, including the paintings and red marks on the doors so that the angel of death pass over the homes. So what they do is they slaughter a goat or a lamb and they take the blood and they paint it over the doorways. Or they don't do that anymore, but they did at this time. And, and literally that's what happens. The angel of death comes and if you were, did not have the red, the paint, uh, not paint, blood, excuse me, over your doorway, and you were the firstborn, you died. So a Haggadah usually includes prayers and the readings that take place during the meal and sometimes contain images that can serve as a pictorial aid. So, you know, not everybody was reading and thus, you know, and children and, and people that aren't educated had an idea of what was going on. The Haggadah contains 14 full-page miniatures, which are divided into four panels. So each page looks like this. It has four separate panels. So in total, it has 56 miniatures. You read from the back. You start from the back and go to the forward, just the opposite of what we do. And Hebrew is right to left rather than left to right like we read. And it stop, it's at the top to the bottom, just like we do. The fact that the Golden Haggadah was richly illuminated is important. Although the second commandment in Judaism forbids the making of graven images, a Haggadah um, are considered educational, and they are exempt from this rule. So thus we have images. It is considered proto-Renaissance, uh, you know, the beginning of Renaissance or the right before the beginning of Renaissance, Re Renaissance because it combines both French Gothic style with the Italian Byzantine. It has Islamic art um, elements, and it has that beginning of the Renaissance, the beginning of that naturalism that we're going to see as we move into the Renaissance. This cross-cultural bar borrowing and artistic styling happens throughout Europe, but it was especially strong in this area of medieval Spain, where the Jews, Christians, and the Muslims lived for many centuries. In fact, we're going to talk a lot about that when we come back in January as we, when we talk about the Islamic unit. So let's get down to the nitty-gritty and talk about these as individual pages. So this is where the beginning of the plagues of Egypt start, and this is the first artist that we're going to talk about, and you can see his, um, well, when we compare them together when we get to the end and we see the second artist, you can see his figures are a little bit stockier 
and his facial expressions are a little more exaggerated than when we get to this second artist. And so what's happening on the right, so again, we want to reference this in this panel because Hebrew goes right to left. This is the plagues of the frogs, and you can see the frogs jumping all over the place. And Moses is the initiate of this plague of the frogs. Um, green frogs leap everywhere, and nobody is spared, even the pharaoh. So Moses is the one with the staff, and the pharaoh is on, on the left. Um, he doesn't look anything like what, when we look, think about Egyptian imagery. And I want you to think about that because this is a very Christian elements uh, what we're seeing as far as figural and, well, the actual elements as well, decorative elements. All right, so on the left is the third plague, which is the lice attack humans and animals. And that's what all these little black areas are here on the figures is supposed to indicate that that's lice. The pharaoh and his magicians are helpless. You can see the pharaoh over here in the crown. He's absolutely helpless to all this lice. And the panels are framed with a blue. They have a, it's actually, it looks green to us, but it's actually blue. And then there's a brown edge with scrolling, zigzagging images all over, which is very Islamic in nature. Moving on to the next page, we have the fourth plague. Uh, and though the Bible states that the fourth plague is about flies, um, in Jewish tradition, it states that it's about the wild beasts that invade the city. And so you can see that the Pharaoh is being attacked here by wild beasts, why Moses stands and watches and basically saying, yeah, I warned you, if you, you know, didn't listen, this is what's going to happen. Okay, so on the left, we have uh, diseased livestock that are, are dying. And um, on the right, you have a man here wiping his tears because now he's lost his animals. And then you have a man here who's tearing his shirt as a sign of grief. Um, again, we're at the, sec the first artist, a little bit squatty in their elements, so the figural elements. Okay, we're moving on to the scenes of liberation. This is still the same artist. And this is Plague 10. And what's happening here on the right this is, we're only going to talk about this one, and then we'll go to the next page uh, for the one on the left. So the plague of the firstborn. So what's happening up here in this, this panel, which has three separate panels, is that you have the mother here who is grieving the loss of her firstborn child. And so again, you can see that on the lap, is the baby who's died, and the mother, the queen, is mourning that. The, the woman that's holding the baby is a nurse. And so over here in this scene, you have an angel striking a man, um, and then with a sword, and then down here at the bottom is the funeral of the baby. Okay, let's move to the next side, on the left side. You have pharaohs order the Israelites to leave. And the pharaoh is up at the top who wears the crown here. And he stands at the top waving like, goodbye, see you later. The Israelites are holding lumps of dough, which is unleavened bread. And they're walking with their hands, raising and illustrating the verse. And the children of Israel went out with the high hand. Moses follows. He's the one with the staff. And um, two women lead the pack, and one is carrying an infant here in the very left side. Moving on to the next page. Then we get to pursuing the Egyptians are shown on the right side here. Again, I want you to notice these look very European as knights. They do not look Egyptian at all. The knights hold, you know, uh, signs, a uh, coat of arms, which would have been very European. And Israel, uh, the Israelites are crossing safely here um, on this panel over the Red Sea. And who is being buried by the water here is the Egyptians. They're drowning. So God had saved the Israelites and the Egyptians are drowning. Again, I want you to notice another woman, maybe the same, holding an infant baby. Moving on to the preparation for Passover. This is the start of the third page, and this is the second artist. We see very long, linear 
figures, very um, S-curve, which is very gothic, very S-curves. And so that melding of elements from different cultures. Um, all right, so what's happening on the left, or excuse me, on the right, is Miriam, who is Moses' sister, and she's holding a tambourine. And a lot of the background here is very Islamic in nature as far as the decoration. And they are maidens dancing and playing contemporary music. Um, there is usually a large number of women found in illuminated manuscripts, 46 total depict in this whole narration. The women in the panel over the surrounding panels are proportionally to whatever's happening. However, in this particular panel, they are the largest in the entire manuscript. All right, let's looking at the left here. The master of the house. He's sitting under the canopy here on the left. And he orders the distribution of unleavened bread, unleavened bread and the sweet made it's a, like a sweet bread made with nuts and fruits to the children the women had six children reflect the jewish interpretation account of the israelite women who miraculously brought forth six children after you know after giving birth to them the artist gave her additional infant in her arms again another woman here holding an infant a baby infant Let's flip to the next page. And here we have the house is being prepared for Passover. So the night before Passover, no leavened bread shall be found in the houses, says the Bible. And so the man is holding a candle and he's searching high and low and looking everywhere to make sure there's no unleavened bread. I want you to notice the covered ceiling. And the woman down below here, she's sweeping the floor to clean and prepare the house. And she's also looking for the unleavened bread. And we have the bottom left, which is here. And the utensils are being cooked, you know, that they use to cook here on the left side. The, they're washing them and making sure that it's getting ready for Passover. This is a big cauldron where they're cleaning everything, you know, they're heating it up, heating the water up to clean everything. And then, of course, here on the right side is where the uh, lambs are being slaughtered in preparation for the meal.